This is episode 246 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we answer your question about intuitive eating. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going to Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dozier, clinical nutritionist and emotional eating expert, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food Method and founder of the Going to Beyond the Food Academy. Corporate executive turned health expert with my own journey with weight, body image, and food, It's now my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently right now and unconditionally. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Welcome back, sisters. Hope you're doing well. Stephanie Dozier here, your host. And today it's a QA and a show. We ask people that are listening to the podcast that are only listening to the podcast and learning, growing, practicing intuitive eating on their own, in their own little bubble in their world to submit question. And that's what we're going to answer today. Now, before we get to this, I have a big announcement to make today. So if you're listening live, June 25th, for the first time ever, the podcast is taking a summer break. And I say the podcast is taking a summer break because I'm not, I'm actually going to work on a secret project. And I want to say secret because as of right now, I'm recording this on June the 23rd. I still don't know the name of that project. I still don't know the name of that thing I'm creating, but it's, I know that it's going to come to me in the weeks to come. And for me to be able to fully tap in to my creativity, to this higher wisdom that you have within you, that I have within myself, I kind of need to stop all creative outlet outside of that project. And so we're taking the whole month of July, me and my team, to focus on our existing client pool and people are in our program and building this thing. At this point in time, we called it Project X. Now, I know what I want to create. I still don't know how it's going to unfold, but it's going to blow your mind. So we will be posting soon uh, a place where you can register to be on the wait list for this thing. And this thing is going to be for strong, powerful women who want to conquer food, body image, and mindset, and then create something kick butt in their own life. So if that's you, um, there will be a link in the show notes. I can't give you the URL yet because I still don't know where it's going to land by the time the show is posted, but go to the show notes and register for the waitlist. And you'll hear me talk about this more as we come back from this creative break that we're going to take in July um, in the first episode on August the 6th. That's when we'll be back with brand new episode of the podcast. Now, in the meantime... Um, I have prepared something special for you for the next five weeks with a collaboration. So I knew about three weeks ago that I wanted to focus my creativity on this thing in the month of July. And um, at the same time, I was talking to a company called Better Help, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, Better help, not health, help. (laughs) The way I pronounce this can be challenging sometimes. Better help has been providing me and I have been their client for about four months now. It's an online counseling company and they have a pool of therapists in there. And you know that I'm a huge believer in therapy. I started my journey in therapy nine years ago now. Um, And it's been on and off in my life since then. And about four months ago, I wanted to find a new therapist. But I didn't want to have to drive anywhere. I didn't want to 
uh, find someone limited to my location. And I was searching online to find a service that would provide that. And I found better help and I've been using them for three months. And then I finally reached out to them about a month ago to see if there was a means for us to collaborate. And little did I know, um, they love me. I love them. So we decided to do something together and they're going to sponsor the podcast for the next five weeks for the month of July. Um, and I haven't done sponsor for the podcast in close to two and a half year now. So because I didn't, I wasn't able to find the right fit and this is definitely the right fit. This is, as I said, where I get my own, uh, counseling therapist. And I think they're amazing because they're online. Um, and, you can pick your own therapist. They have pools of thousands of therapists. You can put your goals into there, what you want to achieve, what you want to work on. They match you to their therapist that they think would be the best fit for you. You get on the phone, on the video conferences with the therapist, and then you work with them. And if you doesn't jive, you don't like them, you can end the relationship right there and switch to another one. Do further research, find someone else until you find the right fit. For me, it was the second one. The first one wasn't the right fit. And then I went on to the second one. I was much more precise into what I was looking for. And then boom, I found the right match for me. So they got to sponsor the podcast. I'm so excited about that. You're going to hear more about them. What we're going to do is we're going to do a series called Back to Basic. And we're going to rebroadcast the most popular podcasts in the last two and a half years. And I've picked those podcasts based on the question that I get in our mailbox info at stephaniedoza.com. And these are the podcasts that I refer people to the most often. So we're going to cover binge eating, we're going to cover emotional eating, mindset, body image, all the basic of going beyond the food. So next those, I guess it was more than one announcement. It was two. So let's get to answering some question. So we have eight questions we're going to answer today about intuitive eating. And well, you know what? Let's just get right into it with the first question. This one is not an anonymous question. Somebody wanted their name um, published. So her name is Elizabeth. Let me read you what she sent in. I bought the book of intuitive eating a few years ago, but it didn't stick because I gain weight. So I have once again decided to do a non-diet lifestyle. I believe I am making a lot of positive step and I'm not weighing myself very often. I eat what I desire, no diet, food, etc. Restriction only in the sense that I don't feel well when I overeat. I do not allow myself to go hungry though. I exercise by walking and swimming because of the pandemic, nothing to excess. I'm only 5'1", and when I put extra pounds, it lands right in my abdomen, and I feel very bloated and uncomfortable. So this is my challenge, practicing intuitive eating, but not gaining weight. Is that possible? Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for your question, and... This is a very frequent question that I receive. The first thing I want to start off with, Elizabeth, is well done. You are trying to rid yourself of 50 plus years of dieting, and you said enough. Now, everyone sit with this for a moment. 50 years of dieting, five zero. This is longer than some of you listening have lived all together. So we have to assume, well, we know that in the brain of Elizabeth, there is some very, very strong neural pathway created that get her to think and act a certain way. And when she asked the question, can I do intuitive eating and control my weight, which is basically what she asked. I understand where she comes from. 
right? I totally understand. We live in a very, very fat phobic society. Elizabeth, like all of us, has been trained to be afraid of fat. And she's been told all these things that's going to happen if she gets fat. And her brain has protected her from that danger of fatness by convincing her that dieting was the right thing, which she now realized doesn't work. But still, there is still some neural pathways in there that says, but you can't get fat because it's really uncomfortable. And and, then it makes your brain creates all these stories as to why it's so uncomfortable and you can't. And then you land with intuitive eating with this deep, 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 deep fear of fatness. And you're like, I really want to do this. It makes so much sense, but I can't gain weight. And that's where Elizabeth is. And that's where many of you are. So let's all take a deep breath. So the answer, the straight answer, is it possible? The answer is no, right? You cannot control your weight using intuitive eating, or you cannot eat intuitively and think you're going to control your weight. Why? Because the basic foundation of intuitive eating is that you have a relationship of trust and respect with your body with your innate wisdom. That same place that I talked about earlier, right? My innate wisdom, my creativity to create this project X is that same innate wisdom and intuition that gives us our eating cue. It's like that magic that sits within us that produce hunger, fullness, and satisfaction with food. You cannot control that, but you have to trust it and respect it. And that's the foundation of intuitive eating is reconnecting with that innate wisdom, trusting it to feed us, to nourish us and to produce health and to produce happiness and to produce joys and everything else that's in our life. We have to listen to it and respect it. And if that wisdom thing that you should put on weight right now, then you have to respect that. It's part of the process. Ridding ourselves of fat phobia, of this fear of fatness, is part of the intuitive eating journey. It's not intuitive eating, it's just not 10 rules that you follow like a diet. It's a journey to rid yourself to unlearn diet culture. And that's why the first step of intuitive eating, either in my programs or in the book that my mentor has written, is ditching the diet mindset. And that is there as step one for a reason, because if you don't do that first, it will undertone the rest of the journey. It will get you to where Elizabeth is, which is I want to do intuitive eating, but I don't want to gain weight. So I still got to control myself. And then it like, it prevents you from giving yourself unconditional permission to eat. It prevents you from respecting your body. Like it prevents you from ridding yourself of the food police. So part of the journey is ridding yourself of diet mindset and of fat phobia. So Elizabeth, go back to principle one of intuitive eating and do your work on ditching the diet mindset. Question number two, eating for emotional reason. And this question is from Lisa and she put her name. So we're going to use her name. Uh, Lisa said, I made the realization that diet don't work for a few years ago after I lost weight on a diet And then realized I didn't know how to eat, quote, normally afterwards, so I put on the weight back. I've struggled since then thinking I'm a failure, but have come to realize that it is diet culture that failed me. I've been since trying to work on normal eating, but I need to work on emotional eating. I have listened to you and other food specialist podcasts. I know what I need to do. I just can't seem to do it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa, for submitting the question. And um, this is the number two question I always get, right? People say like, I'm doing intuitive eating, but I eat emotionally. Beyond not continuing diet mindset and fat phobia, this is the reality of many of us. 
we use food, we use our external environment to cope with what's going on internally. In our community, that happens to be food. In other communities, it would be drinking, perhaps drugs, biting nails, pulling hair. We use food and we call it emotional eating. We use food to cope, to regulate, to buffer our internal world of emotion. We pull from the external world and buffer our internal world. Part of intuitive eating is learning to regulate our internal world. That's what we call emotional intelligence is this ability to process our emotion, to be aware of our emotion, to feel our emotion, to name our emotion and to regulate them without numbing, coping or reacting. That is part of the intuitive eating process, though emotional intelligence, this ability to regulate our emotion is something that is not expended on in the intuitive eating book. Because I mean, the book would have been, if everything was expanded on in the book, it would have been like, I don't know, a thousand page long. That's how the going to be on the food method was born is through me coaching and helping my client and doing my own journey and realize like when I get up to this principle of intuitive eating of coping with uh, my emotion, but I had no other tools. I had to step back and say, hold on a minute, let me go learn some tools and then come back to intuitive eating and say, oh, that's easy now, right? So these other tools are what you need to gain and cater to your own journey. So that could be uh, breath work, that could be um, emotional freedom technique, that could be mindset coaching, because our emotion comes from the way we think, right? So if you regulate your thoughts, you are automatically regulate your emotion. That's what we do inside the going to be on the food method combined with breathing, right? So Lisa, find another way for you to learn emotional regulation outside of food. What you've identified in your question is that you need more tools beyond food to regulate your emotion. Hope this helps. Question three, This one is anonymous and the rest of the question will be anonymous. How can I control myself emotionally? So this is a, I picked this question to come next because it comes right perfectly behind the last question. So here's my question back to you. Why do you want to control yourself emotionally? Before we go even further, go to the why, right? Why do I want to control myself emotionally? emotionally. One of the things that I learned in business years ago, some of you may be familiar with that, is the Six Sigma. It's a principle in particularly in the field of operational excellence in business that says, ask why at least five times so you can find the root cause of your operational breakdown. When I came to the world of health and then the psychology of eating, the same thing was taught to me. I'm like, holy moly, (laughs) I learned that 10 years ago in the corporate world. And it's the same thing here. Ask yourself why enough time so you can get to the root cause. So why do you want to control yourself emotionally? Usually when I do that with someone one-on-one and on a group coaching call, I get to the place that I'm afraid of my emotion. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed by my emotion. So if I control them and I avoid them good enough, I won't have to feel them. That's where I get to when I ask why. And if it has nothing to do with food at first, People want to control their emotions so they don't eat emotionally, so they don't gain weight or lose weight. But when we get deep enough, it's because they are afraid of their emotions. So to you, the first place to start is to start feeling your emotion. And our emotions are present in our body via sensation in our body. So focus when you're having an emotion that you want to control 
go within yourself and start feeling the sensation in your body and label them and name them. This is where we start all of our clients when we teach regulation of emotion. So do that and see where that leads you. Typically, by doing that, we reduce the overwhelm of the emotion by easily 50%. And then we start learning tools to change our emotion in the future. But first, we have to feel the emotion. Question three is anonymous as well. I'm full, but I still want dessert. Why? Good question. I'm going to flip it around and do the exact same thing I did with the previous question. And I'm going to ask you, why not having the dessert? What's the problem with being full and wanting the dessert? And keep asking the question, why? Why is that a problem? For me to help you, I have to understand why it is a problem. Since you're not in front of me, I am going to go for my years of experience in coaching people and asking those questions and say, Typically, when people come up with this question is because they are afraid of fullness. They have in their head a very strong opinion thought to them by diet culture of what fullness means. Fullness means that they're a bad person, that they don't have control, that they're going to gain weight, that they're not going to lose weight, that they shouldn't be full. Fullness is a bad thing. So, Your work, my dear, is to get your thought and your opinion straight about fullness. Fullness means nothing about you. Just like hunger doesn't, just like satisfaction doesn't. Just like the size of your feet don't mean nothing to you. Just like the color of your hair don't mean nothing to you. The color of your skin don't mean nothing about you. You have to change your thoughts around fullness and then be able to be at peace with it. Because that, that obsession that you have with fullness through that question means that you are probably still having diet culture thoughts around fullness. Question four. I still want to weigh myself in. I can't seem to throw away my scale. When I get anxious, I want to weigh myself. Why is that? That's a very good question. Let's step back a minute and think about this, right? The scale is an object. Just like the pen that you're perhaps holding in your hand, perhaps the phone you're holding in your hand to listen to this podcast. It's just an object. It's a neutral thing. Are you afraid of your pen? Are you afraid of your phone? No, because it doesn't mean anything. The reason why you're so attached to the scale is because it means a lot to you. The other thing I want to teach through this question is that human don't do anything for no reason. Let me repeat this again and write this down. Human don't do anything for no reason. All of our behaviors make perfect sense, guaranteed. No matter what my client come up with, I'm always asking myself, why would they do that? What is really going on in their brain that makes them act this way? And then I, the further along in coaching we get, I get them to ask themselves that question. Like, why am I behaving this way? Why am I obsessed with weighing myself? Why is it that I can't throw away this innate object? Now, the person who asked this question told me the answer. She said, when I get anxious, I want to weigh myself. Basically, what she's saying is that she's feeling anxiety. She's overwhelmed by the sensation in her body of anxiety. She is uncomfortable with the sensation and the feeling of anxiety. And she uses her external world, the scale, to comfort, to numb, to buffer the emotion of anxiety. Again, I said earlier, like, 
Some it's food, some it's the scale, some it's the drink, some it's the drug. It's just a thing. In her case, it's a scale. So what your work is really about, my dear, is to learn to regulate your emotion, is to learn to feel the anxiety and not be overwhelmed by it. Now, that's that kind of the temporary solution. You need to go further down and ask yourself, why am I creating anxiety? What am I anxious about? What are the thoughts in my head that creates this anxiety in your body? And we probably all know the answer, right? We all know why she's anxious. Do I need to say it? Fat phobia. She's afraid of gaining weight. She's kind of stuck in that loop. She wants to eat intuitively, but she doesn't want to gain weight or she wants to lose the weight she gained before, whatever the situation may be. So she gets really anxious, perhaps when she feels that she overate or the pants are a little bit tight and she feels anxious, anxious. She's overwhelmed, overwhelmed. She gets on the scale and makes her feel better temporarily until the next wave of anxiety comes in. And then she's stuck in that loop. The solution is in controlling your thoughts, looking at your fat phobia and dismantling the fat phobia in your own head. That's a real root cause, like asking why enough time, that's the root cause here for her. Question five, how do I stop binging? I stopped dieting, but now I can't stop eating. My first thing to you, Anonymous, is well done. To a professional in the field of intuitive eating, this is a sign this period of binging and eating everything in sight is a sign that you're doing your work. That's the power of working with a professional. We can assess that. So my question to you is, how are you learning intuitive eating? Are you at least reading the book, right? I know we all have different financial background. We, certain people can't afford programs and course and coaching, but at least buy the book. I think it's $23 on Amazon and read the intuitive eating book by Evelyn Triboli and Elise Rich because it will be explained to you in there. That's called the pendulum swing. That's what happened after years of chronic dieting. When we release the rule, the brain is having a party. It's like, oh my God, you've restricted the bad food, the carbs, the fat, whatever the thing you were restricting. Let's really have fun with this food now. Because you're like, you're you're saying you're going to trust me. This is what's going on in your brain. Your brain's like, hey, you say you're going to trust me. Let's test this. And you're literally, your intuition is testing you, right? It's like, okay, so I'm craving sandwiches. Are you going to let us have sandwiches? And this is the internal dialogue in your head. You may not be conscious of it, but this is happening. And that's what we call the pendulum swing, right? We release restriction. It goes to the other side. And really, through this experience of eating all the, quote, forbidden food that you used to forbid, you're building trust and respect with yourself. And the more trust and respect you give, the the stronger this relationship becomes, the less swinging the pendulum does. And with like with the real pendulum in life, it starts settling in the middle. And that's what we call intuitive eating. Question six, how do I know my set point? What am I going to ask? Why do you want to know your set point? Why? Second, why? Why does it matter to you? What are you trying to achieve? And get 100% clear on this. To the listener who has that question, ask why five times in a row and get really, really, really honest with yourself. Is that just another way, a politically correct way to control your weight? Is you focusing on the science of set point gives you this permission to think that you could control your weight, perhaps because it's above set point? I've had that a lot with people, particularly professionals starting their journey in the world of intuitive eating. They get really geeky into the theory of set point and they create this permission to control their weight because they're, well, I'm above my set point. So then that gives me an excuse to go back and control my food a little bit. So get really clear. Now for all my geeks out there, 
perhaps my home, my professional, that point is a theory, which means that there is no solid, conclusive evidence at this point. We are in 2020 and there is no firm scientific evidence of how the human can control the human body weight. Think about this. We can send a shuttle to the moon. We can do all kinds of other crazy things, but we haven't yet figured out how to control the human body weight. That's what dieting pretends to do. And we all know that's a straight failure. So this is to tell you how complex the human is. And perhaps we'll never find a way because it was never meant to be controlled. Think about that. We can send a shuttle to the moon, but we can't control the human body weight, perhaps because we were never meant to control it. And this is why I firmly believe that the answer is intuitive eating. So back to this person who want to know the set point, ask yourself why five times in a row. And our last question, question uh, seven. I'm often not hungry for lunch. I just want to have a nice dinner. Is this, quote, bad, end of quote. So I can see you're progressing in your journey because you're using the quote and you're being very careful on how you formulate your question. I'm going to challenge you to take it to the next step. There's not a straight answer to your question because there's so many variable that plays into this. But I want you to ask yourself the question why enough time so you can get to the real root cause here. First of all, what is your background? What is your past history with food? Do you have an example of background in anorexia? Do you have chronic dieting as a background? Like what is causing the reason why you're coming to intuitive eating? This question could depend on your current journey with your eating behavior. So for an example, if you have anorexia on your background, my answer would be very different because you're likely undernourished and you've been for so long undernourished that your hunger signal are completely off rail. And we need to work on actually rebuilding your hunger signal. If that's not your background, And you keep asking yourself, why? Is it because, for example, you had such a large breakfast that you're not hungry for lunch? Is it perhaps because you are at the the beginning stages of intuitive eating and you are not yet connected to your eating cues? And perhaps for you, hunger is like extreme hunger. You don't realize that Hunger does not have to be a nine or 10 on the hunger scale. It could be a five, but perhaps just a five on hunger scale, because you've been chronic dieting for so long, that is not quote true hunger for you, right? So you have to reset what hunger means to you. Is it because you're trying to control the volume of food? And there's a word you use in your question that gets me to think that perhaps that is, you say, I just want to have a nice dinner. And you did not use the quote there, which tells me that you still have beliefs around good, not good and bad food in the unhealthy and unhealthy, but a satisfying meal, a beautiful meal. And it's that nice dinner. Well, the part of the journey of intuitive eating is having that experience of nice dinner at every meal or most of every meal, right? That tells me that you're still trying to control the volume of food because you know it's going to be a tasty dinner. So you're going to, quote, eat more than normal because the rest of your meal are not nice. They're not satisfying meals. You see? So ask yourself the question of why enough to understand where this is coming from. And this is it. Until next time. So if you want help with intuitive eating, consider joining us in the Intuitive Eating Project, where I teach intuitive eating, but not only that, you also get support. And this is the last time for 2020 that we're going to run the live version of the Intuitive Eating Project. It starts on June the 29th. I'm going to be actively involved in the Facebook group. We're going to have three 
live coaching session. We're going to have Q&A calls. We've also added to the Intuitive Eating Project more than 25 pre-recorded main questions we always get and video answers. We've just added eight audio tracks to guide you through the practices of intuitive eating, right? Because it's not enough to just read it. We need to practice it. So I created eight guided practices audio track. And that's all going to be from June the 29th till the beginning of August. So if you think that could be a help for you, the link will be in the show notes. And I would love to have you in to the program with me. This is it. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. However you listen to your podcast right now means the world to me. And I'll see you next week with the Back to Basic series and our sponsor, Better Help. I love you, sisters, and looking forward to hang out with you on the next episode.